Okay, we are looking at the kidney. There are three basic layers, if you will, of the kidney. The outermost layer, which is the dark brown area here, consists of a lot of fibrous tissue. This is called the capsule. The in, inner, uh, inside layer now, in the kidney, this is the cortex. Okay, and then inside of that, all of this is the medulla, the renal medulla. So, capsule, cortex, and medulla. Those are the three basic parts of the kidney. Now, let's get more specific and do some structures. These are the renal pyramids, each one of these pinkish looking structures. The tip of that structure is called the renal papilla, which is just the tip of each and every renal pyramid. After the tip of the renal pyramid, and this is where urine is, urine is going to flow through, this little area, this dip or divot, is the minor calyx. You join a couple of minor calyxes together and you have an area that's called a major calyx. So minor calyx, minor calyx becomes major calyx and then the major calyxes all dump into this one area which is called the renal pelvis. The renal pelvis then sends the urine to the ureter and then it takes it down to the bladder. This area of cortex tissue that invaginates down between the renal pyramids is called renal columns. Renal columns. Okay. Next, I believe we are ready for the blood supply. Everything in red here is going to be an artery. Everything in blue will be a vein or carry venous blood, deoxygenated. Inside, this would be coming in. The renal artery comes in and it branches into segmental arteries. The segmental arteries then branch again into interlobar arteries. Interlobar arteries are the ones that are moving through the renal column. Next, arcuate. Arcuate arteries branch or arc around the top of the renal pyramid. After that, all of the ones that you see, all of these red lines, represent the cortical radiate artery. Cortical means cortex. We're in the cortex now, radiating into the cortex. Okay, after the cortical radiate arteries. Now, this is going to be a bit difficult to see on these models. I'm actually going to take it to a different model. It's a little bit more obvious on this one. So, I want you to look here. This is showing you what actually would be found in all of these areas. So, this middle line again is the cortical radiate artery. The cortical radiate artery then branches off, this little teeny branch is called an afferent arterial, which goes to this red little ball. Each of these little red balls represent the glomerulus. Remember that the glomerulus is a bunch of capillaries. After it leaves the glomerulus, then it goes back and now it's going to be in the venous system. So everything's going to be blue, blue vessels. This little tip part would actually represent the efferent arterial, which would actually be connected to the glomerulus. It would branch off the glomerulus. Efferent arterial. And then the rest, you just travel back the same path that you traveled to get here. This straight line would be cortical radiate vein, though, and that's found right alongside all the arteries. Then go backward, arcuate, backward, interlobar. The only difference is that there is no segmental vein. There's a segmental artery, but not a vein. So these just are interlobars that join to eventually become 
the large renal vein. Let's look at that in a little bit more depth. So this area, it's as if we take this area and we blow it up, that's this model. Okay, so this is this. That's what you're looking at. This is the cortex, the brown part, or I'm sorry, the capsule, I apologize. The capsule, the cortex, here's the arcuate, here's where we are, the arcuate, okay, so everything above that was cortex, and then what's below that? The medulla. All right, that's what you see, but we can see it better here. Here we can actually go into the parts of the nephron, and it's the nephron that actually makes the urine inside the kidney. It's the microscopic structure. We have millions of these. Now, let's go over the parts of a nephron. The main parts, there are two main parts. A renal corpuscle, which is in, in this case this gray ball, and the renal tubule, the tube part, all this tube part. Now, let's break down those structures. The renal corpuscle inside of this gray shell is the glomerulus, is the capillary, the capillaries. Surrounding that is the gray shell, which is known as the Bowman's capsule. Your lab manual says glomerular capsule. Same exact thing. You can use whichever term you want. Okay? So this is inside of that. The whole thing is renal corpuscle. So renal corpuscle is made up of glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. This model, it's as if you took a renal corpuscle, blew it up, and that's what you see. This is this blown up for you to actually understand. So this would be the afferent arterial that we looked at, tried to see way back here, but it was so tiny. A, it's the same thing, afferent arterial, which leads to the capillaries. So this whole inside is called the glomerulus. And then the gray outside part was the Bowman's capsule. So those two things mean renal corpuscle. And then any, uh, anything uh, blood-wise that does not escape goes back through the efferent arterial, which is this one. Now, how do I know that this is efferent and not afferent coming in? The afferent is actually always larger than the efferent, the one that leaves, which I'll explain that, the reason for that in lecture. Let's come back to this model and go over the specific parts of the renal tubule. So, coming off of this, this represents the proximal convoluted tubule closest to the renal corpuscle. And then this big dip and back is the loop of Henle. Now, this is the descending limb. This is the ascending limb, all of the loop of Henle. After that, this part, the darker green part, represents the distal convoluted tubule because it's farther away from renal corpuscle. Certain things happen within all of these tubules, more of which you'll learn about uh, in lecture as well. Um, but certain things are going back and forth between the blood and this tube to eventually produce urine. This white line is the collecting duct. So remember that urine, it starts, our base component is actually blood plasma. So all of the waste products from the glomerulus are forced, this is called filtration, are forced across and out and into this area. Okay, so they're just hanging around and floating here. They will then go into this part, which is actually the proximal convoluted tubule. Anything that was too large and did not leave the bloodstream will go back into the efferent arterial and, and eventually go back out of the kidney. Okay, So what I'm saying is urine is a way for the body to get rid of waste materials and also regulate things like water balance. But it all comes from the, the initial fluid or waste products are from the blood. Okay, And they come out and then they are found in the Bowman's capsule. 
back to our collecting duct. So we made the urine and uh, its constitutes get solved through this renal tubule. Then it goes down the collecting duct and that's where you'll meet the renal papula, papilla. So if you look at this green structure, here would be the renal corpuscle, which is this, and it goes down, makes that loop of Henle. So it starts in the cortex. It dips, the loop of Henle will dip down into the medulla. It'll come back up and then it meets with the collecting duct. So follow the collecting duct down and where are you? The renal papilla. Urine comes out of that area into the minor calyx, major calyx, renal pelvis, ureter, and so forth.